Why should you, why should you own a fish feeder? Let me tell you, if you live around the water, if you have a pond on your property, if you live on a lake, a, a commercial lake or a private lake, doesn't make any difference, or you have access to a private lake or a pond or somewhere where you go fishing or you have some buddy that's got a boat dock on a lake, you really need to have a fish feeder. Why should you have a fish feeder? Well, there's a lot of different reasons. I want to talk to you about that just a little bit. The main thing that you have a fish feeder is it can bring you a lot of enjoyment. But from a biological standpoint, you are going to create a lot healthier fishery around your dock or around your house. Now, I've got this set out on a pier, but you can have it sitting in your yard. If you don't have a dock or a pier, you can actually sit in your yard because today's fish feeders are just really very, very good, and they throw the boat bait out. I'll, I'll set this off here a little bit and show you how that works. But, uh, but the big deal is you improve the fishery. You improve the quality of the bluegill, basically. Now, if you, we don't have catfish in our lake here, but if you have catfish and you have a fish feeder, you're going to gather around a, a lot of catfish around the bank or around your dock around your pier, so you're going to have great catfishing, absolutely no doubt about that. But the big deal is you're trying to feed bluegill. You're trying to feed bluegill. And you want your bluegill to be plentiful, and you want them to be very, 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 very healthy. The healthier they are, the more they'll spawn, the more they'll reproduce. And bluegill spawn all summer long. So they'll spawn more than once. And so if they're very healthy, you're going to have, they're just going to lay thousands and thousands of eggs. And your bluegill in so many bodies of water, especially if it's a, a small lake or a private lake or a, or a pond, bluegill might be your number one bait that the fish are eating. So it's your number one food source for your bass and your catfish to grow really, really big. So you want a lot of bluegill, a lot of bluegill. A feeder will do that because it will produce really big, healthy bluegill. And, uh, and, and you know, they're legal just about everywhere. I don't know any place where a fish feeder is illegal. And it, it, but in addition to all of the biological reasons to have a fish feeder, they're just plain fun. They're just plain fun. Let me show you something right here. Now, I'm going to set this thing off in a minute, but I love to do this. And I do this, you know, quite a bit. I, I just love to walk down, walk down here to the dock and do this. Let me get this thing set aside here. Now, you can see... This is South Fresh fish food right here. And uh, it's small, it's designed where about 20% of the pellets float, about 80% of it sink, which is kind of a unique way that they've done that. And they do that because there are some fish that are very bashful and not gonna come all the way up to the surface and, and feed. So they will be kind of left out. But since a lot of this sinks, it's feeding all of, the, all of the bluegill down there, all of the catfish down there, not just a few of them. And uh, I'm gonna just throw something out here. And if y'all watch the water, you're gonna see what's getting ready to happen right here. And I'm just going to pitch some out right there. If I was later in the evening where they're used to being fed, they would they'd be coming out before I even threw it in. But you see what's beginning to happen there? Now I've got Polaroid glasses on. I don't think we have a Polaroid lens on that camera. But you can see, you can see probably two or three or four hundred bluegill. And they're big bluegill. They're good sized bluegill. Starting to come eat and eat that little handful of feed. Now you can see as it drifts away, the fish drift away with them. I'll throw a little bit more food out there. And again, you see more and more and more bluegill coming that are just kind of coming from under all directions. A lot of them coming from out under the dock. And you can see what's happening there. You see the feed that's going down, and none of that feed will ever reach the bottom. None of it will ever reach the bottom. It's all going to get eaten before it gets to the bottom. And it is a feeding frenzy is what it is. And now as I throw it out further, I start attracting even more because I'll set it off here in a minute. You see what's happening way out there? The fish that are not so bashful are out there. They come up and eat it off the top. The further I throw it, now this feeder is going to throw it way further than that. Throw it all out in one direction. And these fish are just like deer and dogs and cattle and sheep and chickens and everything else. They get used to a feed going off at a certain time of the day. They get ready for it. They start ganging up. Now I come down here and throw it in various times of the day, but there are several hundred big bluegill right there. Now. That's fun to watch, and I enjoy that, and I really like it a lot, but I just happen to have one of my telescopic, Jimmy Houston telescopic cane poles. It's not really cane poles, they're fiberglass. And uh, if I can get the hook out of it there. And I don't have, if I had a, a worm or something, live bait or something on here, but I just got a little, little crappie tail is all I've got on the end of that hook. And I've got a crappie hook on there. That's way too large a hook. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and, and take this off this telescopic rod. Now this rod is a 10 footer, I think. It's basically a modern day cane pole. You can carry it in your trunk because it sinks down. It's, it's very, very short when it sinks down. But, uh, but 
and I've got all I've got is that on there. And, and here, here's the big deal, though, is you can catch fish if you have a feeder around. You're going to be able to catch fish. Now, if I had a bluegill hook on there, if I had a bluegill hook on there, I'd get a bite just pretty quickly every time. And particularly if I had a a worm or a little piece of grasshopper or a, uh, even a, even a little red wiggle or plastic worm like those power baits that Berkeley makes, that would work really really good. But this is the big deal: is that you can actually you can actually catch a lot of fish around where you're fishing. Now I said that, and I, I got one bite as soon as I dropped it in there, and I have not got another bite. They're not interested in that little piece of plastic I got on there. They're interested in that fish food. I can't blame them. I can't blame them. I'll move it around a little bit, make it look like something alive there. Of course, I got a really big hook on there for for, for a bluegill and brim, but should still be able to catch one there. Probably as long as I got feed food falling there, they're not going to bite nearly as well. You can see I had a couple of bites. Put it out there a little bit further. I want to catch one. That's what I want to do. Well, they said, are you kidding me? We got all this fish food and you want me to bite a little piece of white plastic? What do you think I am, stupid or something? Well, one bit it there and pulled it under. But they're grabbing a hold of the end of that plastic. They're, they're just, uh, there's another bite. You can see the cork going under and Jimmy's not catching them. That's just because I got too large a hook on there. We, uh, we, use these, we use these poles for crappie fishing. It's a lot of fun. I mean, a lot of fun. You ever had that problem get bites and could not catch them? Well, if I had a smaller hook, I'd be catching them just as quick as it thing could get down there. And especially if I had a, some sort of actual bluegill bait on there instead of a crappie bait. Uh oh, there we go. I finally, finally hooked one of them. And you can see, when you get this fish up, you'll see what quality fish these are. And one of the reasons they're so big is because they've been eating a lot. I mean, they've been eating really a lot. And you see that bluegill right there? You see that big bass under him? Look at that big bass. You see that big bass? The big bass trying to get my bluegill, and my bluegill is big. As a big bass come up there, that bluegill says, "Get me out of here, Jimmy! I'm not gonna let him get you. I'm not gonna let him get you. I'm not gonna let him do that." But you can see the quality. That was a five or six pound bass that came up and tried to get. To, I see him down underneath him right now. See him down underneath him there. See him coming up, coming up, coming up, coming up, coming up. Oh! That, that, that bluegill said, "I'm not sure about you, Jimmy." But you can see what quality bluegill that is. That's a big, big copper nose bluegill right there. Beautiful. You look at the size of them, even bigger, as big as my hand. Look at there. You have to get a hold of these, you know, real carefully. Look at that. It's a beautiful. See the copper on his gill there? Beautiful, beautiful, big, giant bluegill. These bluegill are going to spawn all summer. They're going to produce huge, look at the fish, huge amounts of, huge amounts of bluegill for the lake. And now, a bass will eat that size bluegill, but it's really too big. But that fish was really trying to eat it back there a minute ago. He was sure he was sure wanting some of that action. But uh, but if you had a, if you had a bluegill bait, you could take your kids, your grandkids. They could stand here and catch a hundred of them without any problem at all. It's just absolutely, it's just absolutely a, a, a fish feeder. Just there's another one right there. A fish feeder just allows you to. These poles are dynamite. These cane poles cost about ten or twelve bucks. They come ten to about fourteen foot. And they're just, just fantastic. Look at the size of that one. That's even bigger. That's a big bull, big bull bluegill right there. That's even larger. Look at the size of that thing. I, I can't hardly get my hand around that bluegill. Look at the size of that bluegill. Just barely can get a hold of it. Look at the size of that bluegill. That's probably a year older than that other one. Look how big he is. Just absolutely gorgeous. But that is exactly why you need to have a fish feeder around your property. Uh, I'm going to set this thing off and watch and show you just exactly what it does here. I get to fish it. I'll probably fish here for the next couple of hours. Even though, if I, boy, if I, had some, if I had some worms, actual live worms, oh, I'd catch one. Just as soon as they get in there, I'd be catching one. And the majority of them have moved off out there where the feed is going, too. They moved off out there a little bit further. And so they're not right up here around the, around the, the dock quite like they were. You saw my cork go under there, didn't you? Got a bite and didn't catch him. Oh, there, I got me another one right there. Now, as soon as the feed gets a little bit, look at that bass chasing him. Look at that bass. Oh, my gosh. Do you see that big bass chasing that bluegill? He thinks that bluegill, he knows that bluegill's in distress. He's trying to catch him. He can't even get that bluegill in his mouth, I don't think. Those are all nice, big-sized bluegill. Just absolutely gorgeous. All right, I want to set this fish feeder off and show you all exactly what happens. Let's 
basically the same type feeder that fish is gorgeous in that sun unbelievable big old copper nose bluegill beautiful absolutely beautiful all right now i'm going to set the feeder off and show you what happens it's going to shoot the feed straight out it shoots it a long way we've got timers i've got this one to set four times a day i'm going to come in here and hit my menu it tells me uh, exactly what the stand is i'm going to hit select my battery's good it's charging it's a solar charger it stays charged up 100 percent of the time all year long Go over here to time, time's 159. Uh, and I don't want to change that. So I'll go to the next one. A feed, I'm going to hit the select. Oh, I'm going to go all the way through to test. Let's go all the way through to the end of it. Test, run for one, two, three, four. Let's run it for five seconds. Hit select. I'm going to shut the gate and uh, kind of watch and see what happens. And I'll show you the way this thing works. And you'll see what happens. Now you notice the activity slowed down out there. It's got a 10 second delay, so you can kind of get out of the way. Well, maybe it's not gonna work. <laughs> I did something wrong. I might not hit, I might not hit select again. Let's see what I've done here. Test run for five seconds, hit select again. Okay, now it's going to go. Let's see. Okay, now 10, 9, 8. Now it's counting down. Oh, Jimmy did it wrong. Uh, it's the first time mistake I've made in the last five minutes. <laughs> comes on and blows it, blows everything out. And then here comes the feed. You see how far it's going out there? And look at those fish. They're out there waiting for it. Look at all the fish hitting the top of the water. As many fish as there was up here close a minute ago, there's just that many more out there far. And you can see the way they're hitting out there, coming up and hitting the top of the water. And uh, yeah, keep in mind, only about 20% of the, the uh, fish food's floating with South Fresh. The rest of it's sinking. And I fed these fish quite a bit, but you see what happened when that thing went off. Now, they'll start coming up. More and more will start coming up and getting that off the top of the water. But uh, that's the way it works. That's the way it works. So that's exactly why, that's exactly why you need to have a fish feeder. If you've got water, if you've got water that you can put a fish feeder on, it will definitely improve your fishing. It will give you a lot of enjoyment, a lot of fun. When your kids or your grandkids are there with you, oh my gosh, they're gonna have so much fun. Smash the barbs down on your hooks and catch these bluegill. They can sit there and catch them one right after another. And listen, my grandkids that are grown still love to catch bluegill off the, this dock. Matter of fact, so do I. Guys and girls, remember, I love you. I think I'll catch me a couple more, just for the fun of it. Look at all of them out there now. Look at all of them out there now going. My goodness, look at that. Y'all remember, I love you.